That's How It Happened, Chapter 2, pages 12 through 19. The school didn't reopen until the August after the shooting. There were a few camera crews waiting outside, ready to film a return, but not as many as you might expect. It had been five months and other tragedies had pushed Vigil County out of the mainstream news cycle. I was glad there weren't a lot of cameras, though. I didn't want my picture all over the news, especially not that day when I wasn't even sure if I could walk into the building without having a panic attack. That would have become a headline in the matter of hours. Vigil County High School survivor has meltdown upon returning to the site of a brutal massacre. It'd be some poor, tragic figure that the county, that the country pitied for a few days. I didn't want anyone's pity. I didn't think I deserved it either. Mom had someone cover her shift at the store that morning. I think most of our parents took the day off. Everyone wanted to be the ones who dropped their kids off for the first time. Even Some even walked them inside like it was the first day of kindergarten. I can go in with you, Mom said when we pulled up, pulled into the parking lot. We watched a, sen- a senior boy sticking close to his dad enter the building. I can stay if you need me to. I shook my head. No, that's okay. As much as I worried about freaking out when I tried to walk inside, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that my mother wouldn't be able to handle it. Sometimes it feels like what happened to that day hurts her more than it does me, which in those first few months after often left me furious, like she was making my pain about her. I knew that wasn't her intention. I knew that I was being too hard on her, but there was there were moments when I wanted to scream at her to tell her I she didn't have the right to cry or to panic or to have nightmares because she didn't she hadn't been there. Are you sure? She asked, and I could already hear the quiver in her voice. Lee, you don't have to go if you don't want to. I told you we can look into homeschooling or find somewhere else, Mom. I'm sure she was trying to help, but I found these feeble offers more frustrating than anything. She worked far too many hours to even consider homeschooling me. And unless we moved, which we definitely could not afford to do, there were no other options. VCHS was the only high school in the county. And anyway, it wasn't as if changing schools would fix anything. The shooting was going to haunt me no matter where I went. I'm just worried. You got so upset when we did the walkthrough with the detectives. If you don't want to go back in there, I'm going to be late. I grabbed my backpack and climbed out of the car, slamming the door before she could say anything else. The sound made me flinch, and I felt a pang of guilt. I'd been slamming doors a lot that summer. But as bad as I felt, I knew I wouldn't apologize. I kept my eyes trained straight ahead, away from the media parked on the school's front lawn. All of my focus was on the door, the same one I'd burst out of five months earlier, smeared with my friend's blood. I swallowed hard as I followed a group of upperclassmen inside. This may sound absurd, but part of me expected the place to look different somehow, like we'd walk in and see signs of the shooting everywhere. But it wasn't like that. Everything in the front hall, the cafeteria, it looked exactly the same as it had the previous semester, before it all happened. It was clean and decorated with Vigil County colors, green and gold, and everyone was running to their friends, hugging and laughing like any normal first day of a new school year. You'd think that'd make it easier, (coughs) but it just felt wrong. I'd been back in here once before that day. Some of the witnesses had come in over the summer to help the detectives map out exactly what had happened, but the school had been quiet then, nearly empty, and it had been It had been possible to pretend at least for a few minutes that I was somewhere else. But this, it felt too normal. I found myself scanning the crowd for Sarah as if I'd expected to see her waiting for me. The way she had been every other morning, I'd walked into the school. Her bright purple backpack slung over one shoulder, a Pop-Tart in hand. She And she'd always have an extra one for me because she knew I'd skipped breakfast in favor of sleeping in. Of course, Sarah and her backpack and her Pop-Tarts weren't there, so I just stood in the middle of the cafeteria with no idea what to do or where to go. And that's when I saw the plaque, a large, shiny black square hung up on the pillar in the center of the room. It was the only real physical change to this part of the school, and I almost hadn't noticed it. I took a few steps forward, I looked up at it, and wishing I had the strength not to. The plaque was engraved with their names. All nine victims, listed in alphabetical order. I took them 
in one at a time, even though I already knew them by heart. Kevin Brantley, Brianna Duvall, Jared Grayson, Rosie Martinez, Sarah McCall, Richard McMullen, Thomas Nolan, Aiden Stroud, Essie Taylor. And beneath their names was a quote from Emily Dickinson. Unable are the love to die, for love is immortality. I hated that quote because it was a lie. Even if love was immortal, it were even if love were immortality, I couldn't help thinking that eventually everyone who loved you would be dead too. And then what did any of it matter? It didn't. Quotes like those were just there to make the living feel better. Another way to help us ignore the fact that oblivion was inevitable. I shook my head, trying to quiet the intrusive thoughts, but I couldn't bring myself to turn away from the plaque. The shooter hadn't been listed among the dead. He wasn't named on any of the other memorials around town either. From what I'd gathered, that had been a heated controversy over the summer. There were people who had suggested including him. He was just a kid, after all, 16, a junior. In some ways, they argued he was a victim, too, a victim of bullying, of his own brain, of a gun-obsessed society, as if any of that mattered. This was one thing that wasn't about him or why he did it. This was about everyone else and the damage he had done. Several of the parents had objected, and I was glad. I didn't want his name up there. I didn't want it anywhere near Sarah's. Lee, a voice said behind me. I looked over my shoulder and found Miles dressed in his usual black t-shirt and worn out jeans. For a second, we just stared at each other. Despite everything that had happened over the summer, it felt odd to talk to him on school grounds. It was a sign. It was the sign I'd been waiting for. The one that proved just how different things were now. After a second, he shrugged and I gestured and gestured for him to follow me and gestured for me to follow him. We wound our way through the packs of students over to the side of the cafeteria where Eden Martinez and Denny Lucas stood with their backpacks against the wall. Eden had her hand in her hair, pulling at the dark wavy strands, and she looked a little green, like she was on the verge of being sick. Denny still had a cane then, and he was clutching the rubber gripper, the rubber grip at the top with both hands. Like when, like he was ready to use it as a weapon if he had to. Lee and Miles coming up on your right, Eden told him. Hey guys, Denny said. Weird day, huh? The weirdest, I said. And maybe the strangest part was that, was standing there, standing with those three. We were an odd group with almost nothing in common. Eden was a year ahead of Denny and Miles and me. And before the shooting, we'd all hung out in very different cliques. Part, but they were the only people I could be with. The only group I really felt a part of anymore. Ashley had had graduated in May, finishing most of her classes from the hospital and at home. She sent us all a text that morning, wishing us luck and letting us know we could call if we needed anything. I wonder if she felt lonely. If she wished she could be there with us instead of watching brief news clips of us walking back into the school. Or maybe she was glad she never had to return. I wondered how I would feel in her position as the only one of us not returning to BCHS or not the only one. I glanced around looking for a flash of blue and black hair or a skull pattern backpack. Who are you looking for? Miles asked. Kelly, I said. Kelly Gaynor, he asked. You didn't hear? Hear what? She moved. Eden lowered her hand from her hair and began picking at her fingernails instead. Her whole family did. My abuela said, saw them packing up a van a few days ago, and now there's a for sale sign in front of their house. What? The word came out as a cough. My throat felt tight all of a sudden, the way it does after I've been stung by a bee, before mom gets out the EpiPen. I tried to breathe through it, but overhead... The bell rang sharp and loud, startling all four of us, which didn't help. As swarms of students flooded past us, heading to their classrooms, I reached out and grabbed hold of Eden's arm. She jerked back at first, curling in on herself. Then we both mouthed quick apologies. None of us liked to be touched without warning, even by our friends. It was worse back then. Any sudden movement felt like a threat. We all had to learn how to be careful with one another. When the ringing had died down, I managed to squeeze out a few words. Kelly, Kelly is gone. Ke Kelly, Kelly is, 
she's gone. Later in an assembly, our principal didn't talk about the new zero tolerance policy for violence or the various civil suits being filed against the school. Instead, he focused on the one positive thing he could find. He told us that to the school board's surprise, every student who had been in the freshman, sophomore, and junior class the previous year had returned to VH VCHS, and our incoming freshman class was the largest in the school's history. We'd all come back to our school, he said. We weren't going to let fear or hate win, he said. This is our home, he said. Here's what he didn't say. Almost every student had come back. Every student but one.